Hi, everybody. It's Melinda Gallant, and I want to welcome you to another Cape Conversations. I've got a great guest today. She's local. She writes great books about nature and history. So come along. Let's have another Cape Conversations. Hi everybody, I'm Melinda Gallant, and I am sitting here with one of Sandwich's most famous authors, <laughs> and she lives in the village. She's quite, oh, I think maybe a little bit shy about her renowned fame. I am with Christy Lawrence. Christy, how are you? Oh my goodness. Melinda, it's great to see you, and come back again. We've, we've done this before. We've done, this, You've interviewed we've done a me. lot of things before. We have, but we're not going to talk about them, are we? <laughs> well, no, not the ones we can't talk about. Right, right. Um, so you've got another new book. I do, I do. And I, I really genuinely appreciate your having me on um, to talk about it. Um, if I could, the... Oh, uh, sure, yeah. sure. The, yeah. the last Heath Hen, oh. um, is th this is the yeah. this is the the cover, and the the what is a heath hen? I have no idea what it is. Uh, all right, that's the right starting place, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, so the heath hen is a it's a small game bird about the size of a chicken, mm -hmm. but the story and the reason it's important is it's one of the extinctions that we need to know about. We need to be aware of, like the dodo. Uh, well, uh, more recent than that, and yeah. this extinction took place on Martha's Vineyard. Um, so and the heath hen, well first of all, let's go back to the very beginning. Yeah. You decided to write this book because? Uh, because I wrote the Thornton Burgess biography. Oh, that's right. Nature's Ambassador. Nature's Ambassador, right. which... Um, on the bookshelves now. <laughs> every bookshelf, <laughs> yes, yes. yes. Um, but within the the story of Thornton Burgess, which took four and a half years to write, so there's a great deal of information there. But within that is the story of the Heath Hen, because Thornton Burgess and Alfred Gross from Bowdoin College, mm -hmm. um, uh, Gross had been hired to track this bird on the vineyard when it was known that this is the only place this species existed. Ever. Uh, in the beginning, earlier in the 1700s, mm -hmm. it, it ranged from maybe Maine, New Hampshire to maybe Virginia. But it was a northeastern bird. It was, yes. It's related okay. to the ruffed grouse and the prairie chicken. So okay. it's in the grouse family, Okay. Um, and which is a very large and prolific family. But this particular branch became more and more isolated for various reasons until it only existed on Martha's Vineyard. Were they really good eating? Apparently the pilgrims thought so. <laughs> I was going to say, uh, it was, was it not a turkey and a I've, heath hen they no, ate? No, it, it, wasn't, it wasn't that big, but you know, uh, when you're, uh, you're in survival uh, mode, you're, so you're eating you what's, what's available. So I have sure. seen suggestions that the pilgrims did eat, mm -hmm. um, did eat heath hens. But that was their range. They became isolated um, on, the, on the island of Martha's uh -huh. Vineyard. And they were doing fine there until the species began to, uh, to decline. And this is the story of the efforts to wow. save the species from extinction. Um, that that failed, um, and the, the species was declared extinct in, in 1933, um, that's, that's relevant extremely relevant now when there are so many extinctions. But the point of my book is that within Thornton Burgess's stories, this one is extremely powerful. Mm -hmm. uh, to read his account of actually holding the last teeth in, and I'll explain a little, little in a moment how that happened. Um, and the, the first-hand observation of a creature and it's known that this is the last one. There is not another of its kind mm. anywhere. So how and does... And it's, it's very powerful, it's very moving. And so you, you ask me, you know, why did I write this? And it's because this story is, is very powerful and it's, 
I think it's understandable for children and for adults. I've had conservationists say, you know, it's really wonderful that you're documenting this. We, we don't want to forget this, you know, right, right. how this happened. Right. But to me, it's important to, to give credit for the effort that went into it. Right. Um, and for, when, okay, I'm yes, going to interrupt you. Yes, yeah, please. So, so what causes or what, I mean, I, this is a, mm. it sounds like a crazy question, but not everything goes extinct. Exactly. So they're either, you know, over, you know, mm -hmm. over, um, used or overkilled or right. whatever for right. food or, or right. for like buffaloes for their for their um, yeah. hide and food. There can be human causes. Right, yeah. right. That said though, and, and then I suppose there's natural causes there as are. well, you yeah, know. Absolutely. Um, and in 1933, if there's only one of those little guys running around, mm -hmm. which I know this, I'm making this very simplistic, no, but no, then no. I'm like the child who will read this. <laughs> and and that, so I, why, and why though? I mean, was there not a, was there not, was it the last female, the last male? They ah. didn't, they didn't do artificial insemination with, yeah. you know? Yeah. No, I mean, you're making, you're making fabulous points. And one of them, is this this was a, a, a not a female this was a male uh -huh. and the last three that were known uh were all male and at this point there is there is no hope for the species so there were and so your, because your what point, happened to the females then because there had to, so the female had three males instead of a instead of there, there were none at that point so well, we don't know why let no. me just track back a little bit i okay. feel like i've kind of skipped okay. forward a little bit too fast here so the the heath hen existed on the vineyard mm -hmm. it became known that this species was in danger mm -hmm. uh, efforts were made um, to get a uh, a, a, a game protector yeah sure, there. sure. Uh, a conservation area was established on the vineyard. Food was even put out. So efforts were strongly made, you know, to protect In this. In the 20s, teens, 20s, yeah, 19s? Yeah, yeah, okay. exactly. Um, but the tracking, that's where Thornton Burgess came in because his friend, Alfred Gross from Bowdoin, was hired by the Commonwealth. Oh, now I see. Yeah, I was hired yeah. by the Commonwealth. I see. When the numbers began dwindling and there were um, there were thousands, and then there were hundreds, and then there were dozens. And how fast did they And then go? there were there were twelve, and then there were three, and then there was one. And how fast did that happen? Over how many years? Well, you the know? the impact I would say was you know over a hundred years it well, began to decline, but the more serious decline. And I think what you're looking for is, is the, the answer to the question you raised, you know, how did this happen? Um, it was in part human uh, cause. There was a loss of habitat because this, this is a, um, it's a ground bird. Sure, like you said, like the grouse. And yeah, and so it, it, it right. nests on the ground. Pheasants. So foxes, coyotes, sure, sure. and on the vineyard, um, cats are, uh, you know, able to capture these birds easily. So a couple factors that are uh, described in here uh, and illustrated were a massive fire that occurred in 1916 on the vineyard. And this destroyed about 20% of the island. Wow. It was a huge fire. So it destroyed their habitat? It destroyed a lot of the heath hen, where the heath hens lived, the particular area where they I lived. See. And so this is a little controversial, uh, how the heath hens responded to this. But um, in my research, it appears that people who knew this species believed that this occurred at a time when the, um, the females were nesting. They were, they were young. And when this fire occurred, they did not leave the nest. So this is controversial. I've heard uh, conservationists today said, well, that's kind of a myth, you know, maybe not. But in the, in the written record, there are Im important conservationists in the day who said, yes, that was the case. The females would not leave. 
And so this gets once again. <laughs> this get, this gets back we to what you were saying for. about the the decline of particularly the females. Sure, sure. You see, so there was the fire, and the uh, the devastating impact to this this particular small bird, and. It, they're not that small, though. I mean, we don't want to be thinking hummingbirds when I say small. They're well, chicken size? size. Chicken size. A yeah. big chicken or, you know, you see like yeah. a hen, like a real hen. Yes. A is heath smaller, hen. Is right. smaller than a rooster. Uh, well, normally. smaller smaller than a, a turkey, for okay. sure. Okay. Uh, so, um, yeah, so where was I? Um, they there was the big fire. The, there was the fire, and there and was the destruction to the habitat and the destruction to the population. Right. So the population is, in 1916, harshly impacted. Wow. And nature, uh, this was not a human uh, source of additional hardship, but there's a northern species called the goshawk. And the what? I'm sorry, one more goshawk, time. G-O-S-H-A-W-K. Goshawk. Goshawk. And these were um, predatory birds from, from northern areas. But their source of food was in decline at this particular time. So as happens, they moved south looking, looking for mm. food. And on Martha's Vineyard, they found this population of ground-dwelling birds um, that were very easy, you know, easy prey for them. So 1916, you have the fire, and then a year or two later, you have the goshawks sure. that also impacted it. So it was maybe it, it was, was nature's plan. It was one blow after another. Wow. But the the cats, we we don't want to forget this because this is mentioned in the account by um, the editor of the Martha's Vineyard Gazette, uh, Henry <coughs> Beetle Huff, wrote what was essentially an obituary for the species because everyone on the vineyard was well aware of this tragedy that was playing out there and the decline and then eventually the last bird and the vineyarders named this bird Booming Ben. Is that right? Yeah, and it had to do with the extraordinary behavior of this species. Um, and I, uh, I can, can get in, into that in a second, but uh, Henry, Henry Beetle Huff wrote this Journey to Extinction, which, as I said, a copy of it, if anyone's interested, is on my website. Mm -hmm. And um, there's also some archival video of heath hens. Thornton Burgess and Alfred Gross recorded the heath hen. Uh, there's so many pieces of this story. Recorded how? Uh, on paper? Camera. Or? By camera, okay. Yeah, yeah. They they were both photographers. They still and and video. Wow. Yeah, and they made both. Um, Bowdoin College. There was some uh, archival video that was found. You know, eighty year old video that was wow. found in an attic in Bowdoin, <laughs> and the college uh, went to the the trouble and expense of of having it restored, so it can be seen. Um, uh, so, and just to make this point too, that uh, according to U.S. Fish and Wildlife, that this, this bird, this extinction, the heath hen, may be possibly the only North American species of extinction where the last individual in the wild is known. The, the passenger pigeon was in a cage. Uh, right. when the last one yep. died. Uh, but this, this bird was in nature. And so it's an important story for that reason too, that mm -hmm. this was documented. Mm -hmm. And the reason it was documented was because Alfred Gross had been hired, as I said, to track the decline of the species. And there's a way to do this, which I was Amazed. The question in my mind. I mean, yeah. you said you're asking questions like like a kid, and that's the the point of this book, you mm -hmm. know. And those are questions that I was asking too. How are they going to count <laughs> birds in nature? How, yeah. how do you do that? But you they know? do it here all the time. You see the 
the birders, the, the, the right. mag migratory birds, they go down to, to right. the beach here right. in town, right. and you see them with their long lenses, and yes. they're there, and somebody's yes. got a piece of paper, and they're doing one, two, three, basically. Yeah, right. It is kind of amazing. Right. But in this case, this species, the, the, the grouse family, I do believe, uh, but the heath hens, they're called a lecking species, L-E-K-K-I-N-G, and that mm -hmm. means that in mating season, they all congregate, the males and the females, mm -hmm. in one place. I see. So if you get yourself down there and you're in a yeah, place where you're sure. not going to scare them off, you can count them. Yeah. And if there are a lot, there may be, and on the vineyard at some points, there were a couple of these, um, of these lecking grounds, or they became known as booming grounds because part of the, the behavior of the heath hen, huh. they have these sacks here. Um, there's a picture here in the front of the book that uh, shows the bird with the, uh, the sacks inflated, and they're orange, so it's quite colorful, and the behavior of the bird is, oh, and will she be able to find it? And maybe she won't. Well, that's all right. We'll, yeah, we'll yeah, yeah. They'll, we'll take a picture of it. It's, and it's it'll be, in here. It's, it's in, in here. here. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, that's one thing I'd like to talk to you about. Yeah, is please. We'll to go back to the story, of course. However, the illustrations are beautiful in mm, here. Mm. They are really something. Now, um, you had an illustrator do it for you, correct? Or right. with you as you told the story? Well, uh, I hired Michael Berndt, um, B-E-R-N-D-T, mm -hmm. um, to illustrate this. And in the back of the book, I wanted to provide an author statement about answering the questions that you've raised. How did this book happen? Yeah. You know, how yeah. and why? Yeah. And I asked Mike to also write something from the illustrator's point of view. Sure. So I'm reading Michael's and he said, when I started working on this, uh, and here's, here's his picture. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And here's, here's the cover of the book. This yeah. is the illustration. Yeah. He said, I didn't know what a heath hen was. <laughs> uh, I don't think many people would if it's extinct. Well, they, well, they, they might. Um, they might. I think birders, uh, you know, I've found yeah. a lot of people who know, know what and about heath And the age of those people? Um, well, Older? The, you know, across the board. Yeah, birders, okay. birders cover the full gamut. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Well, I know that. I just didn't yeah. know if ones that were younger, you know, in their 20s yeah, and 30s. They would. And there are birders in their 20s. They would. There are birders in their teens. Yeah, now. they would because... Um, um, I, there are books coming out now that have information about heath hens. You can go on Amazon, you know, and, and get find book books on the heath hens. Isn't yeah. that funny? Yeah. So the, it's, the it's important. the best book is this book for kids. Say no and more. And what's the name of the book again? From your lips. <laughs> <laughs> what's the name of the book? The, the Last Heath Hen. The Last Heath Hen. And I, I wanted to say, too, the subtitle is An Extinction Story. And I had oh, yeah. to think about that. Um, I didn't want to scare people off or children off. At the same time, I, as a children's book, I wouldn't want people going, oh, this will be about a cute little fluffy, you know. Chickadee. I'll get it for, <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I'll, I'll get it for my niece. And, and then, oh, it's about an extinction, uh-huh. So I thought it'd be best to have this on the cover. The truth is, it's a conservation story. And well, yeah, and, and kids need to know about that, too. They do. And kids read books. Now more than ever. Kids read books about um, farm animals. Mm -hmm. uh, Charlotte's, Charlotte's Web mm -hmm. certainly has not about extinction, but what happens on farms mm -hmm. to animals. Right. You know, they go to slaughter. They go to, you know, right. we don't right. talk about it in a big way, but right. it is definitely in that, it is. in that book. Right. So I would think that that, w I mean, I think it's good that it's on the title, but I don't think that would preclude somebody to read mm -hmm. it because it's a true story. Mm -hmm. it's, and I think that that's why it's important. And I am looking to have schools and teachers and librarians and parents and conservation see this as a tool. Sure. As a way to explain, to talk to children about extinction. And in the back, uh, this was another decision, being a nonfiction writer, uh, my first children's book, uh, the back pages are blank. 
Oh, so and this is an opportunity for children uh, to record wildlife observations and drawings. Nice. So, uh, you know, it's, it's an encouragement, too, for children to step out into nature and understand that they can also record what they see, whether it's a flower or the sky or, you know, whatever. Sure. But they, sure. can, they can record uh, themselves and just to encourage that, that participation. Now, you've um, done a couple of speaking gigs uh, for this, I know, mm. for this book. One was at the Sandwich Public Library, correct? Right, right. You did one there. Yeah. And, and, and Bourne, and Bourne, Bourne Library. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Nice. And Falmouth Library. Excellent, excellent. Um, but um, in, let's see, later this month I'm going to be at the Osterville Library, and this is sponsored, I wanted to mention, by the Barnstable Land Trust. Oh, see, that's wonderful. And they have been... John Miller is a part of that. He's a wonderful man if you get to meet him. I would look forward to meeting him yeah. and thank him personally because um, we had a uh, panel discussion with Wayne Peterson and Luann Johnson and Chris Nils, all important conservationists to discuss <coughs> extinction. That was, yes. in, that was in June. And uh, the Barnesville Land Trust was marvelous. So sure. I can't say enough good about them. Yeah. And they're co-sponsoring this, this talk at the Osterville Library in, in, um, Excellent. in October. Well, let me ask a little th stuff about, let me, stuff? Where did that come from? Oh, well. That's very, that's, <laughs> you know, that's talk show lingo stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So tell me. It's your show. Anything <laughs> anything you want, it's fine. Well, I don't normally talk that way. I don't know where it came from. But that said, um, where, um, you've been in Sandwich how long? Um, let's see, probably 45 years. So you came in 75? Um, 70, no. Yes. 80 something. 75. So it's longer than that. Mm, my, my math has never been good. 49 yeah. years? Because I've been here 44. Yeah. And um, you were you and Long your time. kids were some of the first people yeah. I met. That we met. Right. I know. Right. I know because my oldest took a liking to your oldest. Yeah, and yeah. And were good friends. Yeah, yeah. And still are. Yeah, that's true. Um, so when did you decide you would write? Or have you always <laughs> written? <laughs> oh, my gosh. Uh, I have been writing, I started a, keeping a journal when I was 10, Wow! and have literally stacks of journals. It's just, it's just what I've always done. It's always made sense to me, and what's going on around, um, you know, to describe uh, flowers and, yeah. and just, you know, life's experiences in writing, it's just always made sense to me. And so, the, uh, you know, I saw a box recently. You reach an age where you do have to clear stuff out. And <laughs> my first article for uh, the Cape Cod Times was, I think, in 1978. And Woody, da-da-da, Joe would know his name, the editor there, uh, hired me as a stringer. And... You know, I started writing for Cape Cod Life, and then I started writing for National Magazines. Right. And, but, but always, it's just this sense you gather in the information, you filter through it, you tell the story. Well, you used to write travel books, too. Right, right, yes. Wow. Insider's Guide, Voter's Travel Guide. Right, yes. all of those. Yes, so, yeah. yes. We'll so never write another just... one. <laughs> Such hard work. <laughs> well, gathering all that information is yeah. overwhelming, I Brutal. Think. Mm. Um, when did you start writing books, though? Was yeah. Nature's Ambassador your first? Um, yes, I had contributed to Cranberry Harvest um, as a you know a, a contributing writer. I see, um, and that was that was published by uh, Joe Thomas in um, um, in New Bedford. Beautiful book. So I had had. Uh, I'd contributed to books, but my book, uh, Nature's Ambassador, was the first. And I started researching that and writing it in um, uh, 2009, mm -hmm. and then it came out in, in 2013. So, And this is your second one? Yeah. And, and and there are others. There are others to come. Oh, I'm sure there are. I guess my question is, because of Nature's Ambassador, 
is what brought you to this one. So mm -hmm. what is this one going to bring you to the next one? Right, right. That's a very good question. Do we know? Um, <laughs> I think every book that I'm going to be writing from now on will probably be different. I have done about five years of research on an underwater archaeologist, for oh example, George yeah. Bass. Oh, sure, 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 sure. And uh, it's a fabulous story. This is That's the great. father of underwater archaeology. Right, right. I interviewed him for years. So, you know. So you've got a lot of material. I've got a ton of material. Excellent. So it'll be, it'll be different. But I will say that this story, I, I just, I believe in it. And I think for children, really, um, across the country to have access to a story that helps them appreciate conservation. Absolutely. And, and, and understand extinction in a different way because the adults who've, who've read this book and they've said to me, it's so sad, you know? And it is sad, but I, I just, <laughs> if, if I may, if I may, um, <clears throat> When I came to the end of telling the story, yeah. you know, the narrative, right. uh, 1933, the species is, is declared extinct, right. what then? Yeah. As a writer, yeah. okay, Christy, now what are you going to yeah, do? Right. And so I had to figure this out, how I was going to bring this story for children to, uh, to an end. And it, if I can read a little of this. Okay, just a little bit because we're coming to it's, the end of our time. It's very short. Um, so this is how I decided it came to me that this would solve my problem. Mm -hmm. So I wrote, why did scientists and conservationists and the people of Martha's Vineyard try so hard to save this beautiful wild bird that danced and pranced, stamped and twirled, boomed and hooted and tooted? Why was Booming Ben, the last heath hen, so important to people? For the same reason you and I are important. In all the world, there was only one race of heath hens. In all the world, there was only one booming Ben. In all the world, there is only one you and only one me. And when there is only one of something, it is very important to take good care of it. Oh, and there's and the there's the picture yeah. that that Mike yeah. drew. Yeah. And it was in the middle of the book. Yeah. And we were putting the book together and I so I moved it to yeah. the end yeah, and so and just the way he's in such a caretaking yeah. you know yeah holding very not possessive light. but yeah. caretaking sure, sure so anyway well, we'll wait to see what the rea reaction is in response well i think it sounds it's wonderful and i think it's wonderful for kids and if you're lucky it'll get on the banned book list and then everyone <laughs> will want to buy it that's what i think i said write a book and make it sure it gets on the banned you yes. know extinction okay we can't talk about that so we'll yeah. put on the banned book list yeah well, Christy, thank you so much for being here. It was absolutely wonderful to hear about this book. It's, it's charming. Mm -hmm. The illustrations are wonderful. And the subject matter is so important. Mm -hmm. I want to thank you for writing a book like this. Oh, thank you, Melinda. Thank you so much for having me. This has really been great. Well, I appreciate it. And, go, and, and we also have in there information about Nature's Ambassador. Thornton Burgess, and we're there celebrating we Thornton Burgess. That's right. Uh, through the end of the year here in Sandwich, yeah, so exactly. it all ties together. It does. Thanks again. It's wonderful. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> wow, Christy Lawrence, author, local, terrific. Oh my gosh, and she's written a great book called The Last Heath Hen, An Extinction Story. It's a wonderful story for kids about how extinction happens. And it all happened actually within close proximity to Cape Cod. It happened on Martha's Vineyard. A wonderful story actually. And it shows us how we need to take care of nature today because we don't know if it's gonna be there tomorrow. That's what's so important. And that's what the whole point of the book, book is, is to take care of things. So I wanna thank you for joining me today and I'll see you next time on another Cape Conversations.